Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It's a renewing system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your calls, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, the longevity products or any products, skin health questions, if you uh, have a comment or if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please head over to my website, brightsideben.com, or, or also my blog, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. We blog regularly and have news stories up at both websites. Also videos up at criticalhealthnews.com lots of videos actually i'm going to be doing one on the ketogenic diet another one on the ketogenic diet later today so you want to check criticalhealthnews.com you can also get on our newsletter mailing list at criticalhealthnews.com if you're interested in keeping up with with my blog posts you can purchase longevity products off the websites as well or you can call the brightside ben phone team at 866-735-2470 that's 866-735-2470 and make sure you ask them about joining the brightside ben team for a one-time 25 dollars fee you can start yourself a longevity business and help change lives while you make some money a little bit of money or a lot of money some folks are making thousands of dollars a month numerous thousands of dollars ten twenty thousand dollars a month some folks thirty thousand dollars a month for that matter or you can make a, a little bit of money you can make a couple hundred dollars a month if you so desire and of course you can help change lives while you're doing it with nutritional supplements a lot of people have not even heard about nutritional supplements or certainly aren't aware of the power of nutritional supplementation and these are all folks who uh, who can benefit from you and your business and your knowledge if you're interested in starting a business that can help change lives call the phone team at 866-735-2470 and if you're interested in our, our truth skin health products truth five percent retinol gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, or Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, you want to go to truthtreatments.com. I also blog on skin health issues at truthtreatments.com. And check out our Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. Got blog posts up on our Facebook page there as well. And also, periodically, we do coupons and giveaways at uh, The Truth with Ben. That's my Facebook page for my skin health uh, skin health product, skin health products as well as skin health subject matter that I blog on. Okay. We are talking about fibers and sugars. Fibers are a type of sugar. All of this has to do with the ketogenic diet, believe it or not, because fiber is so important if you're going to be eating more fat. If you're going to be eating more fat, if you're going to go ketogenic, there's things you got to do if you want to leverage or if you really want to exploit the power of the ketogenic diet, which is, in my opinion, the way we should be eating. High fat, low carb, moderate protein. I talked to a gal uh, a couple days ago. And she said that her husband went on the ketogenic diet and he lost 25 pounds, but his cholesterol went up. And his cholesterol went up significantly. Now, I don't really think cholesterol is that big a deal. Blood cholesterol is that big a deal. But you don't want large jumps in things. If there's a large jump in your chemistry, even if it's the chemistry of an ordinarily benign molecule like cholesterol, cholesterol is not just benign, it's an important molecule. But if it jumps really high, that means something's going on. And you want to know what's going on in the body that would make 
uh, cholesterol levels jump. His cholesterol levels went up 100 points. He lost 25 pounds, though, but then his cholesterol levels went up. So I asked her what he was doing, and it turns out that uh, this gentleman was... Uh, was trying to go ketogenic by eating lots of bacon and lots of eggs. Now, it's true, bacon is a good source of fat. And eggs are also a good source of fat, but they're also high protein. And you got to be careful with the protein if you're going to go ketogenic, if you're really going to uh, maximize the benefits of the ketogenic diet. Why? Well, protein is a building substance. And if you're not working out or you're not exercising or perhaps recovering or, or growing, if you're not utilizing that protein, protein very efficiently gets turned into sugar and then into fat and also when your sugar goes up your blood sugar goes up your cholesterol could go up so i told this gentleman uh, i told his wife that uh, he shouldn't be eating so many high protein foods you got to watch your protein if you're going to go ketogenic you got to watch your carbs and you got to watch your protein carbs you got to you got to be pretty much at zero well not quite zero but maybe 10 percent, 20 percent of your calories coming from carbohydrates that's very little carbohydrates if you're going to go ketogenic effectively you want maybe four or five tablespoonfuls of carbohydrates a day. That's not a lot of carbs. You can double that with protein, maybe 10 tablespoons, somewhere along that, six to 10 tablespoons of protein um, a day, which is not a lot of protein. Certainly more than carbs, but it's not a lot of protein. You can't go crazy on the eggs and the bacon if you want to go ketogenic. They are high fat, but they're also high protein. So the trick to being effective, uh, to, if you're going to exploit or leverage the power of the ketogenic diet, is the high fat in combination with, this, that's important, in combination with low-carb, moderate protein. That is maybe three or four tablespoons of carbohydrates a day and maybe twice as much on the protein. The combination is what gives you the, the benefits. The combination of low fat, moderate protein along with, uh, I'm sorry, low carb, moderate protein along with high fat. And then there's also nutrients that you can use. We're going to talk about niacin later on. Niacin is one of the all-time great fat metabolizing nutrients. Niacin has been shown to lower blood cholesterol, lower blood fats. It's important for helping the body process sugar. And we're going to talk about that later. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time talking about fiber for lowering blood fats. If you are going to go ketogenic, uh, you want to make sure that you got a good source of fiber. I like flax fiber uh, or chia seed fiber. Uh, Beta-glucan is a fiber. We talked about that. That's a medicinal type of fiber. Most fibers are not going to have the medicinal properties of beta-glucan. Um, before, we, before we ended the program yesterday, I, was, I, I told you I was going to talk about another really interesting fiber that's not exactly a fiber, but close enough. We're going to call it a soluble fiber. Instead of glucose, um, like beta-glucan, beta-glucan is made up of glucose, this fiber is made up of uh, another kind of sugar called fucose. Instead of glucose, it's got fucose. Now, that may be an odd-sounding kind of uh, sugar, and probably a lot of folks haven't heard of fucose. And that's because when we think of sugar, we always think of glucose. We all, or, or sometimes we'll think of table sugar, which is sucrose, or maybe perhaps fructose. Fructose, glucose, and sucrose are the main sugars that everybody thinks about. Sucrose being table sugar, which is a combination of glucose and fructose. Fructose being fruit sugar, which diabetics know about. Uh, fructose is not, it's not benign. It's got some problems associated with it. And then, of course, everybody knows about glucose. That's your standard sugar. So when most of us think about sugars, we think about uh, sucrose, glucose, and fructose. Those are the major sugars. But there's actually eight different essential sugars. They're called essential sugars, or uh, some folks will call them glyconutrients. These sugars, and there's eight of them, are very fascinating, and they are involved in tr lots of different places in biochemistry. They're combined to form polysaccharides. They're mixed with proteins to form something called glycoproteins. They're just phenomenally functional in the body, and it's important that we know what these things are if we're going to really leverage health, and especially if we're going to leverage health from supplements and from food. So you got eight of them, uh, and fucose is one of them. We're going to talk about that one. We're going to talk about strings of fucose here, but I want to get into these eight different uh, essential sugars or glyconutrients before we get into fucose and this uh, really interesting soluble fiber that's made from fucose. We'll do that when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. I got lines open for you, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about here today, fiber, glycoproteins, mannose. We're going to talk about mannose here in a sec. Love this stuff. 
It's actually a company called Manatech, the multi-level company that, that uh, discovered the power of these glyconutrients and started selling them in a network marketing fashion. It became pretty big, actually. Uh, Dr. Ben Carson is famous for endorsing or being part of the Manatech company. Manatech is a nothing more than a network marketing company that sells glycoproteins and glycoprotein supplements. These days they sell other things too, but uh, just goes to show you how powerful these things are. Manatech became a pretty big company just by selling uh, polysaccharides, glycoproteins, these uh, substances that are made from these so-called glyconutrients. So, you got eight of these things. Eight essential nutritional sugars, eight essential glyconutrients. First one is mannose, as I said. Mannose is probably considered the most important of these, uh, of these nutritional sugars. It's found in cranberries. And this is one of the reasons why cranberry juice is considered to be the main uh, non-medical strategy or non-medical uh, um, non supplement, I guess, for... Uh, for dealing with urinary tract infections. It turns out that mannose, the sugar mannose, has an ability to slime away E. coli bacteria that can cause UTI. So if you've ever drank cranberry juice to get rid of your urinary tract infection, you are taking advantage of the power of mannose. Mannose is found in lots of different fruits, although cranberries are probably one of nature's best sources of mannose. It's absorbed in the upper part of the intestine. Uh, but uh, very little mannose is metabolized or broken down, and it, that makes it a kind of a, an effective sweetener for diabetics, or I should say effective sugar for diabetics. It's not necessarily all that sweet, and that's a problem. You can't really use it as a sweetener, but it, you can use it as a medicine if you're a diabetic. As I said, for urinary tract infections and, and bladder infections, if you uh, have a UTI, you go to the doctor, you're probably going to get an antibiotic, which is, may help you in the short run, but it's certainly not going to help you in the long run because of antibiotic resistance and because of killing off uh, probiotics in the gut and avoiding antibiotics at all costs, if you, uh, unless you absolutely need one, is highly recommended. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but a couple months, a couple weeks ago, uh, the FDA actually banned the use of antibiotics in topical products, in some topical products, topical soaps, actually, particularly an antibiotic substance called triclosan. Antibiotic resistance is real, and it is a serious, serious problem. Now, more than likely, they're going to come out, come up with a way of killing bacteria that doesn't involve antibiotics. That may be ten or ten years away, or or five or ten years away. I was just reading how they're looking at using viruses to kill bacteria. That doesn't sound like a good idea, but that's the latest strategy to deal with antibiotic resistance, using viruses to kill bacteria rather than antibiotic substances. Apparently, viruses or bacteria don't mutate in response to viruses. In any case, if you want to avoid antibiotics and you have a urinary tract infection, you might want to think about drinking some cranberry juice or using mannose. You can actually buy mannose powder or mannose capsules at a health food store. Take about a half a teaspoonful of mannose powder in a glass of water every two hours for a day or two, maybe uh, eight to ten glasses of mannose water per day. Mannose is anti-inflammatory. Mannose is involved in the production of both anti-inflammatory and inflammatory chemicals. It's involved in the inflammation system. Uh, mannose is anti-cancer. It slows down metastasis. It's anti-inflammatory. It's been shown to lower blood fats. And it may even lower blood sugar levels in diabetics, although I was just reading uh, some conflicting evidence about mannose. Now scientists believe that mannose levels may actually indicate diabetes risk. This is an article uh, that was published in the June 24th issue of Cell Metabolism. Scientists have found that they can measure the mannose in the blood of both lean and obese, peoples, uh, obese people and identify if they have an increased risk for type 2 diabetes. That's according to uh, scientists at the Institute of Technology in Stockholm. So researchers found that some Subjects with high mannose levels have a higher risk of type 2 diabetes. So until recently, it's been thought that mannose was safe for diabetics, but maybe not, at least according to this article in Cell Research. And in any case, mannose isn't very sweet, as I say. So you're not going to probably be using it in your coffee or your tea, but as a capsule or as a powder uh, for urinary tract infections, that might be something that you want to consider. Although I have to say, I haven't seen great results uh, eliminating urinary tract infections with mannose. A second essential sugar, glyconutrient, is something called galactose. 
Galactose is found in milk. It's converted into lactose. Galactose is made up of, or I'm sorry, lactose is made up of two sugars. It's made up of sugar of glucose and galactose. It does have a somewhat sweet taste, galactose does, and you'll see it in power bars sometimes. Um, the Atkins power bars use galactose, I noticed. A lot of low-carb, so-called low-carb uh, snacks uh, and power bars will use galactose as a sweetener because it has a somewhat sweet taste. It's sweeter than mannose. It's not as sweet as glucose, but it has a somewhat sweet taste. It's broken down slowly. It doesn't stimulate insulin as much is table sugar, which makes it an effective sweetener for folks worried about their blood sugar. Although, as I say, it's not as sweet as ordinary sugar. It's probably about a, a third as sweet as ordinary sugar, which is a blend of glucose and fructose. Like mannose, galactose has anti-cancer properties, which is interesting for sugar. You know, we always hear that cancer is a sugar feeder, but these glyconutrients actually are anti-cancer. They're actually uh, slow down tumor growth and metastases. Galactose has been shown to improve the healing of wounds. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It improves calcium absorption from the intestine. A 1983 article that was published in the journal Ophthalmic Research showed that galactose can be protective against cataracts, which again is interesting considering the fact that ordinary sugar is uh, considered to be a cause of cataract formation. Galactose, as I say, is found in milk. Mother's milk is high in galactose, so it's thought that galactose has something to do or plays a role in the growth and the development of tissue. Galactose is also important for uh, neural functioning and for brain functioning. There's some studies that show that it may improve memory function, according to uh, Dr. Emil Mondoa, who's done a lot of research on the glyconutrients. Uh, Dr. Mondoa actually has a really cool book if you're interested in, in learning more about this. Uh, a really easy to read book, a kind of a layperson's book called Sugars That Heal, The New Healing Science of Glyconutrients. Uh, Dr. Mondoa says that galactose levels tend to be lower in patients who have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases. If you're wondering where you get these things, by the way, galactose and mannose and, and uh, some of these other sugars uh, that we'll talk about, fruits and veggies, that's going to be your best source. Uh, dairy will have some as well, uh, especially galactose. So fruits and veggies and uh, galactose lactose, although you do want to be a little bit careful with the fruits, uh, but veggies are a good source, and uh, grains also can have uh, some of these sugars in them as well, and then dairy is also a good source. If you've heard of glucosamine, and who hasn't heard of glucosamine, you've heard of a very important uh, essential sugar, at least in its form, in its NAG form. NAG stands for N acetylglucosamine. It's a type of glucosamine. It's considered to be an essential sugar, and this stuff is absolutely fabulous. In fact, next to fucose, I would have to say NAG, N-A-G, or N-acetylglucosamine, is my favorite of the essential sugars. That's because it's got all kinds of roles to play when it comes to healing, especially when it comes to healing the skin and the digestive tract. N-acetylglucosamine uh, is a fabulous supplement to take, and you can buy it as a supplement uh, if you're dealing with leaky gut syndrome, and if you have any chronic degenerative disease, you are dealing with leaky gut syndrome. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll take a break and come back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got a uh, full board uh, or an open board. Nobody's on the line, and now's the time to give us a shout. If uh, you've tried to get a hold of us in the past and got a busy signal, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about any of these glyconutrients we're talking about, mannose or uh, NAG, we'll talk about NAG tomorrow a lot. I love, love, love this stuff. N-acetylglucosamine, it's similar to glucosamine, which pretty much everybody's heard of. Uh, N-acetylglucosamine, N-A-G, NAG, is a building substance, particularly for the skin and the intestine. It is uh, one of the all-time great supplements for, you, uh, for folks who are dealing with high hyaluronic acid, and it also is a building block for making high alluronic acid. I just keep, I'm starting to see all these commercials now for high alluronic acid creams and lotions. I've been using high alluronic acid for, for decades in my uh, topical products, but only to moisturize and soften the surface of the skin. That's pretty much all you're going to get from a topical high alluronic acid product. So if you're one of those folks who's emailed me or, or talked to me about using high alluronic acid in a topical skin, uh, skin product, you should know that uh, you you're not really going to get much benefit from topical high aluronic acid. 
uh, it's really important stuff inside the skin, and, and there are dermatologists and plastic surgeons who will actually inject it underneath the skin. Uh, but the best way to get hyaluronic acid is to make your own hyaluronic acid and a building block or the building block for hyaluronic acid is NAG, N-A-G. So you can make your own hyaluronic acid or support the production of your own natural hyaluronic acid by taking N-A-G supplements. Aloe vera, by the way, is a good source of N-A-G. As all, uh, pretty much veggies are going to have a little bit, anyway, uh, of N-A-G in it. Uh, this is why one reason why vegetable juices can be very helpful for folks who are dealing with Crohn's disease or celiac disease or intestinal health problems. Problems. Really, it would be very helpful for all of us, uh, vegetable juices. But particularly if you're dealing with digestive health issues, the NAG content and some of the other sugars that are found in vegetable juices can be very healing for the digestive tract. Love NAG. We'll talk about that tomorrow. And then we'll talk about uh, the rest of the essential sugars, including fucose, which is a building block for making one of Longevity's most important products and one of my favorite of the Longevity products. We will talk about that as we continue talking about the sugars and fiber and the ketogenic diet on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Hang tight if you're on hold. Just want to talk about a couple of things that I read that I think are interesting. This is uh, an article from uh, Alzheimer's Research the journal Alzheimer's Research. Uh, Alzheimer's stemmed but not stopped, say experts. Well, hmm, isn't that interesting? They can figure out how to slow down the production of Alzheimer's disease, but they cannot figure out how to stop it. That's because Alzheimer's disease is a degenerative condition of the brain. It is simply nothing more than the brain falling apart the way the rest of our body falls apart. And that's why you can't stop it with a drug. You can't stop it with a vaccine. You can't stop it with anything that the modern medical model can provide. But it doesn't matter because once we understand that Alzheimer's disease is simply a degenerative condition of the brain akin to arthritis or leaky gut syndrome or any other degenerative condition, it's arthritis of the brain, it's osteoporosis of the brain. You pick the degenerative disease, you name the degenerative disease and apply it to the brain and you got Alzheimer's disease. It's simply the brain falling apart. If it happens a little bit to the back of the brain, you get Parkinson's disease. It doesn't really matter what they call it. And it doesn't really matter what the specifics are. It matters that the brain is falling apart and it falls apart for the same reason any other part of the body falls apart. Because it's starved, because it's hypoxic, low, uh, low levels of oxygen, and because it is toxic, particularly with sugar. And that's why today researchers will tell you that Alzheimer's disease is type 3 diabetes. This is what I've been talking about for decades. There aren't a lot of things that go wrong in the body, and uh, Alzheimer's disease is so tragic. My dad is dealing with it, and I'm dealing with it, and everybody he knows is dealing with it. That's one of the things about Alzheimer's, is it's not just the patient, it's everybody who's taking care of the patient. And what makes Alzheimer's so tragic is anybody who's, who's dealing with the condition can tell you, or, or, or ca taking care of somebody who has the condition will tell you, is that you're looking at the person, but they're not there. You don't even get closure. It's like they're dead, but they're not dead. And it's terrible, and it is so tragically unnecessary. If you know anybody who has Alzheimer's disease, start to focus on every single one of the principles that we talk about on this program. Everything. That means uh, stabilizing any uh, the blood sugar, first of all, using selenium and the sweeties and keeping sugar intake low. Using the B-complex and the, B, uh, uh, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, thiamine, the ultimate niacin. There's a zillion strategies for stabilizing blood sugar. Then you want to work on the gut. Make sure your Alzheimer's patient is using liquid nutrition. Make sure your Alzheimer's patient is not ingesting lots of calories. Make sure your Alzheimer's patient is staying away from foods that cause digestive distress or food allergens. Make sure your Alzheimer's patient is eating less calories. And thirdly, make sure your Alzheimer's patient is breathing correctly. Make sure your Alzheimer's patient is uh, practicing slow, deep breathing techniques and activating the parasympathetic, the relaxation, rest and digest nervous system by using hot water, uh, immersion in hot water, I should say showers and hot baths, massage, Reiki, yoga, meditation, in addition to deep breathing techniques, relaxing the musculoskeletal system by doing progressive relaxation where you start with your toes and work all the way up your body uh, progressively. Uh, contracting and then re relaxing all the various muscles. That, by the way, is a great way to fall asleep if you're having problems with insomnia. 
It, this is not rocket science, folks. This is very simple, and it doesn't require a medical intervention. These are all strategies that we can employ ourselves. If you know anybody dealing with Alzheimer's disease, have them listen to the last five minutes of this program, and you can make a huge, huge difference. Of course, getting on a good nutritional supplement program is always a good idea. Okay, let's see. Well, let's take a let's take a phone call here, and then we'll get to a couple more of these uh, interesting articles. Bob in Minneapolis, welcome to the bright side. What's up, ma'am? How you doing? Hey, good morning, Ben. Are you the Bob I just um, saw, Bob, uh, at the convention? No, no, nope. different Bob. Nope. Okay. Yeah. What What's going well, on, Bob? Well, my my question is twofold. Um, basically, you know, looking at the ingredient stack on food label. Yes, good idea to do that. Yeah, long chain uh, sugars. Um, is there a you know, from what I understand, listening to you, if I'm interpreting this correctly, mm-hmm. is that the long chain sugars, uh, you know, just the body doesn't really break them down. It just uses it as a fiber. It doesn't break it down into sugar necessarily. Or are there some that do? And that folds into the question when you look at the uh, ingredient stack. If that particular long chain sugar is listed towards the beginning of the stack versus the end of the stack, is there a point where there's too much of a concentration, or too much of a good thing of a fiber like this? Uh, and I'm thinking like maltodextrin. Um, and yeah. in, in addition to, and then in addition to that, um, far as is there a way, a simple way to identify maybe suffixes or uh, prefixes of yeah. you know inert uh, organic. Um, substances that maybe you don't want to ingest in your body. I'm thinking, you know, obviously uh, one being potassium sorbate and uh, and maybe sodium dioxide. But in a, as a general you can't rule, tell, you, you, you can't know. There it is all. no, there is no fixed suffix, pref, suffix or prefix uh, protocol for assessing whether something is something you, something you want to avoid. You can't really do it that way. You got to know the chemistry of the, the stuff. You asked a bunch of questions there. I don't even know where to begin. Maltodextrin, though, that's really interesting stuff. I get a lot of questions about maltodextrin. You want to hang on, Bob? Guys, I got to. We got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. Okay? okay? Don't go away. Yep. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, or accelerated aging, or acne blemishes, or if you're just looking for an overall anti-aging tonic to prevent the formation of wrinkles and fine lines, you want our Truth 5% Retinol Gel. Retinol is your go-to active ingredient for anti-aging along with vitamin C, and you'll get both vitamin C and retinol in our Truth 5% Retinol Gel. You also get premium lipophilic, fat-soluble, stabilized, moisturizing vitamin C in our Truth Balm, Truth Serum, and also in our Omega-6 Healing Cream, and never any emulsifiers, waxes, water, fillers, oils, silicon, preservatives, fragrances, perfumes, and nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. That's the way I formulate, and that's the way everybody should formulate. You should only pay for what you're using. Check out our products at truthskinhealth.com. That's truthskinhealth.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Bob about sugars. I'll get Bob up here. Bob, you there? Yeah, hey, hey Ben, can I add one more sugar for you to mention? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one more long-chain sugar, commonly found in ingredient uh, stacks, is uh, xanthan uh, sugar, xanthan uh, gum. Well, that's not really sugar. Uh, yeah, I, I guess thought, it is a sugar. No, no, you're right. It is. It is a sugar. It is a sugar. You're right. I apologize for that. Um, it's not. It's just not a sweet sugar. And that's an interesting distinction, sweet sugars versus non-sweet sugars. A lot of these things that we talk about as being long chains, even though they're sugars, they don't have a sweet taste. They're not broken down the same way as ordinary sugars are. Now, you asked a whole bunch of questions there. I'm not even sure where to begin, but the maltodextrin one is very interesting because I get all these letters about maltodextrin. Let's be clear here. Maltodextrin is nothing more than a long chain of glucose, okay? Just like beta-glucan is. But uh, maltodextrin is is partially broken down. It's uh, said to be hydrolyzed. So 
it's, it's kind of broken down and it's not used as a fiber it's used more as a thickener <clears throat> excuse me uh, and also to provide a certain kind of uh, mouth feel to products mouth feel is a very important component of powdered substances like the beyond tangy tangerine for example because when you add these powder substances to water and you drink them there has to be a certain texture to the fluid in order to make it palatable and maltodextrin gives that fluid a texture it's technically it's called mouth feel and that's really the main role for maltodextrin in these uh, in these powder drinks and uh, in drinks in general but maltodextrin is not a problem I don't know why people are freaked out about maltodextrin it's nothing more than glucose it will uh, raise your blood sugar very slightly because it can be broken down uh, unlike other glucans or strings of sugar like beta glucan which is not broken down uh, but uh, it's really going to not going to have a very large effect on blood sugar uh, it does come from corn and and I know you know corn is a major GMO crop but by the time it's maltodextrin there's probably not much of the GMO proteins left although maybe there are depending on how purified it is I suppose uh, there may be some some of these uh, GMO proteins that are left over but probably not I, I wouldn't worry about maltodextrin at all and I certainly wouldn't freak out about the fact that it comes from GMO corn not that GMOs are you know we should be freaking out about GMOs but there's not much we can do about it at this point um, uh, and but I wouldn't worry about the GMO aspect of maltodextrin and I wouldn't worry about the sugar aspect of maltodextrin either I hope I, I hope I answer that question for you it, it should never be. It will never be at the beginning of an ingredient deck. I, where did you see a product that had the at the beginning of the ingredient deck? Well, I, I don't recall right now, but um, uh, can you? I, I'm it, having a hard time hearing you, Bob. It would, be, it would spike your your uh, insulin then, wouldn't it? Say one more time, Bob. I didn't hear you. If it was at the top of the ingredient stack, oh yeah, it, it, it will. It'll spike, spike your insulin. Your insulin. Yeah, it'll okay. spike your insulin a little bit. I mean, if you did straight maltodextrin, you'd probably spike your insulin. It is a, a, a high glycemic index. Uh, it's got a high glycemic index number, so it's not all that spiky, if, if I could use that term. Uh, but I don't know why it would ever be at the beginning of an ingredient deck. It's usually in products at like 0 0.1 or half percent kind of thing. Okay. What about Xanthan gum? Same deal. Xanthan gum is uh, thickener. Uh, it very, it's used very in tiny quantities. If you put, and I've been using xanthan gum in my skincare formulations for 30 years, I know a lot about xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is actually made from uh, from bacteria. It's a fermented product, uh, and it's a great thickener for shampoos. But if you use too much, it creates this jelly kind of gooey, a snotty quality. So xanthan gum is usually only used in skincare products at less than two percent, max two percent. Hard, I don't know of any that are over 2%, usually 0.1 to 0.5%. And then in foods, it's usually used at that kind of concentration as well, 0.1 to 0.5%, because any more than that, it will change the tech, really dramatically change the texture of the food. So you'll see specks of it sometimes in food products or, or candy bars or something like that, but uh, not very much at all. And it's not going to have much, at, at the rate, at the concentrations it's used, it's not going to have very much of an effect on blood sugar. Bob, I got to move. Is there any, how, you anything else? Yeah, how, how many, how many how many long-chain stirs are there that would break down into certain that? Zillions. There's, oh, boy. There's tons. Long, there's tons okay. of these things. There's, yeah, there, there's just various combinations is the thing. But in nature, there's just tons of them. We're not even okay. going to be... I'm going to talk about some of the major ones, but uh, there's tons of them. Okay. Okay, Bob. Thank you so much, Thanks, man. Bro. Have a great day, buddy. Good to talk to you. All right, let's go to Irene in San Diego. What's up, Irene? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. Um, let me just do a quick testimonial. I have your skincare products, and I've noted a, noticed a difference, and so has um, a friend of mine. The Truth Skin Health products? Yeah. What are you using? I'm using, I use the serum in the morning, and then at night I use the balm. Okay, nice. And How long have you been using them? Um... I've really, I've been concentrating using them for three weeks now, and nice. I think I bought them like six months ago, and I kind of, you know, it didn't really, yeah. Yeah, but and I, now you started, yeah. you started using them, and you're noticing results in three weeks. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the good news. For, well, a couple things. First of all, you're not interacting with preservatives or fragrances or anything toxic in there. It's all just the good stuff. But here's the great thing about it, Irene. As the weeks and the months progress, the results are going to accrue. You're going to get better and better results over time. So if you're noticing results now, wait till you see what happens in four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, two months, three months, all the okay. way down the road. That's where the benefits really get going. Thanks for the testimonial. I appreciate it. Oh, What's you're going, so welcome. What's um, going so on? Here's the deal. It's my mother. She's 82. She's in great shape for 82 but she was struck by lightning when she was like 13 oh, wow. or something like that and wow. she's never been able to sleep well and i you are know, you serious takes, yeah 
How was she struck by... I, that's kind of a fascinating story there. She was just walking around and all of a sudden lightning hit her? Yeah, I, it was so long ago. I don't, And I only heard about it maybe 10 years ago, so... And yeah, she hasn't I mean, been able to really sleep young. since? She has what? had insomnia since? Yeah, and I guess it's a common... Um, like side effect of being hit by lightning that's what they say like Boy, can you imagine what that must be like holy I know. moly that'll change your life i suppose was it really like a jolt where she got knocked out kind of thing no i don't think she got knocked out i don't think wow. I don't, i'm not sure hey do you ever hear this thing called ball lightning say that again have you ever heard of ball lightning no i mean I've ball lightning ball. is when the lightning lands on the ground and forms a ball and chases people Oh, my God. Can you imagine that? <laughs> was, I mean, it sounds funny. I'm sure it's not funny if a ball of lightning is chasing you around. But anyway, so here's the deal. Sounds like she's got an amplified stress response. How old's your mom? 82. Okay, what else is going on? There's something else. Go- got to be other stuff going on. Well, she's like me. I mean, we both have the, kind of the same system. She tends to be constipated. She had a fibroid okay. removed when she was right. 39. And, okay, so yeah. she's got some stuff going on. Here's the deal. Uh, you want to f- work with the hormone cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone. So you want to pre- start practicing cortisol-lowering techniques. I'm going to give you a bunch of them because we got about a minute and we're going to run out of time. Sure. So f- first of all, oxygen is the most important way to lower your cortisol. Deep breathing. Slow, okay. and I think I said this yesterday. I'll say it again. Slow, deep breathing rhythmic breathing. The rhythm is important. Actually, I didn't say it on this program. I was on another program. So let, me, so let me just go over into that real quick. When you're breathing, you want to breathe slowly. This is very important. If you breathe too fast, you'll actually, actually activate the stress response, and that's what you don't want to do. So you got to breathe in slowly, and you got to do it through the nose. In through the nose and out through the nose. And you always want to exhale a little bit more than you inhale. And when you're breathing slowly, you want to make sure you're breathing all the way into the bottom of your belly. you got to practice pull, uh, your belly going out as you're breathing in. In, and your be- belly coming in as you blow out the air. And you got to practice that because that's not natural. So belly goes out as you inhale, almost like a balloon filling up. And then the belly comes in as you exhale, like you're squeezing the balloon. And you got to practice that. And then the third point, after slowly and deeply, is rhythmically. The rhythm is where you fall asleep. The rhythm is where you relax the body. The rhythm is where you lower your blood pressure. The rhythm is where you activate the parasympathetic nervous system. It's like those old, remember those old movies where they would have the watch and the hypnotist guy would like say you were getting sleepy while you looked at the watch going in a pendulum kind of left right motion? It's mm-hmm. the same idea. Rhythm activates the healing nervous system and rhythm will open up the, the uh, airways to inc- increase the oxygenation and rhythm will help your mom fall asleep. So slowly, deeply and rhythmically with her breathing. Of course, uh, keeping her sugar intake down and correcting any digestive problems is going to be key, but we're just out of time, Irene. If you call back tomorrow, I could finish up with you. I apologize for that. Thank Thank you so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out our our skin health products at truthtreatments.com. Retinol 5% gel, Truth Bomb, Truth Serum, and Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.